Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's February 9th, 2014, and this week we're going to do a lesson covering composing layered guitar parts. Now, this question was sent in from Sam. He's in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, and he wrote in with this email. I have a question on adding extra layered guitar parts when I record. The sound of only one guitar in my home studio recordings just comes across as sounding way too thin. Can you make a video on how to branch out from an original guitar part? And can you talk about what kind of composing approach work well for these parts. That would be a great video for me. Thanks from Sam in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Sam. You know, whether you're in your home studio setting or live on stage, there's nothing better than layering more than one guitar part into the mix in order to really thicken up your guitar sound. Now, the trick to doing this relies on several concepts. Primarily, it has to do with composing a properly organized secondary part, which will obviously complement the principal part that's uh, already a part of the mix. And uh, you also want to be sure that the register of the secondary part is somewhat different. Uh, you know, that can cause a clash sometimes. You could do that by selecting a different pickup configuration or swapping over to another guitar. Uh, but, uh, you know, whether you dial in a new tone for the secondary part or you perform it on a different guitar altogether, you want to keep that point in mind. And yet another part of the equation is how you add effects to each guitar in the overall mix. But uh, particularly in this video, my main focus will be on the creation of the parts. So let's zoom in on the neck and run through some example ideas. Well, let's get things started with a primary rhythm riff that we'll use underneath all the other upcoming layered parts that we'll study in this lesson. And the primary musical passage that I've come up with is in the key of an A major sound. It's a pop rock style chord progression. It uses the chords of E major, D major, A major, uh, B major, uh, B minor chord, pardon me, comes in there. And then we have a G major. So the G major is acting like a modal interchange chord. It just loops around like that. Now here's how it sounds when uh, these chords all come together as a rhythm guitar jam. Okay, that's our primary rhythm riff. Now next I'll uh, add a simple secondary guitar part that uses some smaller chord shapes performed up high uh, for the upper three strings. Now keep in mind that these patterns for this secondary guitar part are all chord shapes that use the exact same notes found uh, from within all the other chords for the primary guitar part. However, in this new upper register part, I'm playing the higher shapes here as what are normally termed of as uh, inversions. Now, these small inversion shapes are really cool to learn extremely well and then add in up above any primary rhythm guitar groove since they'll naturally and easily punch through uh, up in the higher register quite, uh, quite quickly and uh, you know, just send your guitar parts really at the top of the mix. So just remember to watch how you mix these parts though. You know, in your multi-track sessions and you're mixing these, you won't need to dial them up very high in the mix because they're going to shoot through real easy anyhow. So here's how this upper three string triad part sounds. Okay. Now, now that we've established a solid uh, secondary rhythm guitar approach, let's add another very cool option when it comes to the use of these layered guitar parts. The next idea is a concept which tends to go by many different names. You know, sometimes you call them uh, double stops, you know. And they're also sometimes referred to as dyads, or even other times you'll hear them simply called two note chords. But whatever name you slap on these two note ideas, they always cut through the mix really nice and can even act extremely well on their own too because uh, they're only two notes and they can easily be performed with uh, that nice slide technique. They behave a lot, you know, like a scale in many ways when you do that on the neck. So anyway, here's the next layered riff for our progression I came up with using these unique sounding two note double stop chord ideas.
Now, when you're moving along the neck with these shapes, you want to make sure that uh, you're using your middle finger as your tracking note along the bass, and then you'll be uh, alternating between your index and your middle, just depending on whether the shape goes slightly diagonal or if it's vertically aligned. Uh, so that way, you'll be able to coast along the neck very quickly and easily with these shapes. So they're very cool, a lot of fun to mess around with. Now my final layered guitar part idea uses a single note melody line. You'll hear this sort of thing in all kinds of music. Um, just off the top of my head, you know, I'll think, you know, about Latin, Afro-Cuban, reggae, soca calypso, you know, Caribbean stuff, you know, just to name a few styles. But that's not to say that this concept wouldn't show up in several other styles of music as well. Now, the main idea here is that we're going to be performing something closer to what a bass guitar player might play on their in instrument. And the only thing that we uh, can add in, uh, uh, to, you know, when we do this is a brighter sounding register to our parts since our strings are much thinner on our instrument. So hopefully our guitar parts will cut through a little bit better. Now, anyway, Anyway, here's how this single note melody layer sounds that I put together. Now you can tell when I'm playing through that part, uh, I've got a um, you know the neck position pickup on. It's kind of a fat tone, you know, but you could switch uh, pickups around, get in another sound. And really take on a whole other color with this stuff. So remember that idea of flipping to other pickup configurations because that's going to make a really big difference on how the tone of your part uh, comes across. Now, okay, to wrap things up, I'm going to play this uh, part I just did one more time, but this time all these layered part examples are going to be included in a full mix version jam track example for you to hear how everything can come together as a final production. So as you could probably tell, any time you record or perform within a larger band setting, the layering of musical parts becomes a fairly serious issue to the end result of the sound. For guitar arrangements, we need to be well aware of the register of our layered parts. Uh, you know, guitar parts that get layered with too much low end register can become extremely muddy sounding. And then when you layer parts that utilize too much high end register, it can become really a nightmare when it uh, comes time to mixing the parts uh, in your multi-track mixing sessions. So, uh, you know, you just want to pr try to do it so they can become well balanced within the mix of the track, but it can be very difficult sometimes with uh, too many parts that are up in the higher registers. They want to punch through and ride on top, so mixing them can be sometimes an uh, absolute nightmare. <laughs> and you know, the one helpful tip, though, that I can offer before we wrap up is that generally the old adage of less is more is something to really consider when you layer any instrument uh, within any mix. Uh, well, anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.